what you say you are gone I just get to all I know Because you are not a man that changes your mind oh. Those that know you will trust in you Not in horses and chariots By the arm of flesh No man can prevail No man, no man, no man, no man My confidence is you What is hard, what is hard for you It's gonna never exist You do not lie, you do not fail What is hard for you to do It doesn't exist though. It's gonna never exist
butterflies in the belly I'll be in a summer oh, oh. See the way you love me See the way you care for me you Carry my matter for your head In the may I'll be in a song Like a little baby You watch over me You know they carry me they play
everyone can I have your attention please good evening uh, everyone uh, thank you for coming I'm inviting uh, our sisters Rita and uh, Grace to light up the candle Lighting up the candle for the first anniversary of uh, the late His Grace Paulino Lukuduloro. After the candle has been lit, I invite the daughters of Jerusalem to come and give us a worship hymn before Pastor. Charles Okuo will open with a word of prayer. So after the candles are lit, the candle is lit. Daughters of Jerusalem, you're welcome to give us a worship hymn or worship prayer and then Pastor Charles will come and open the, the event with the prayers.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. ربنا كويس كل وقت ربنا كويس جاءنا بدي له بتانا بإبادة وكلنا باحترام ومحبة نقوم مع بعض ونعبد ربنا بتانا كلنا بمحبة نقوم مع بعض ونعبد له بتانا الحي الخلاق الليلة تواقف قدام بتاو إله بتانا هو اللي بيعمل في حياة بتانا واللي بيعمل في حياة بتاك هللويا ما في إله تاني زي يسوع ما في إله تاني زي ربنا لو ما ربنا هالليلة يس إله بتانا قوة إله بتانا سلام إله بتانا بتفرح هللويا
نكون في الصمت ونذكر يوم بتاع أخونا وأبونا بولينا لورو إحنا جايين وننحني ونصلي مع بعض هللويا قصص بتاعنا يجي أفتح لنا بالصلاة Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we have gathered here today to remember your servant, to remember his life and his legacy. We thank you for his service to the people of South Sudan and Sudan and many people in Africa. We thank you for his great love for all humankind. Father, you have decided to take him even when we still needed him more. But we want to thank you because your way is not our way. Tonight, as we remember, Heavenly Father, help us to reflect on the life of your servant that lives as a testimony among the people of Sudan and South Sudan. Help us to reflect and look back on the journey that he took through your blessings and the service that he rendered during his life. Oh Lord, we just want to thank you for bringing us together from many areas just to come and join together in this celebration. We pray for your protection as we gather here. May your Holy Spirit move around and protect us. And may this day be a day that we will always remember as remember your servant. We pray for those who came after him and they are still serving Heavenly Father. May your blessings be upon them. May your blessings be upon all everybody that is here that this day may be a day of joy, not a day of sorrow. Today, our Father, your servant, lives with you in heaven. God, may you continue to be with us as we remember him. Be with us during this time and continue to guide us in your way. We pray and commit each one of us into your hands. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I go to Tihid. I see the Sabbath, Rabbana. The Sabbath, he laugh bitana. He laugh bitana al-hayy. And then the Sabbath, he will remember him. Abuna, wa khuna, wa habibna. Ah, Lord Paulino, Paulino. Yes. No go ma bad. We the Sabbath, Rabbana. We the Sabbath, ma bad. Yes, be muhabba kida. Yes, I thank God for the separate one here. Yes, Ida, Ida, my God, Ida, yes. Thank you. 
of Jerusalem. Can we give them a big round of applause? Hallelujah. That's great. They have broken the ice. Now everybody's warm and uh, feeling lively as well. So I invite uh, Deacon uh, William Dow uh, forward to come and pray for the departed souls that we've lost along the uh, across the map. Thank you. And for those who are not able to stand, uh, you can sit down. Brothers and sisters, our children, acknowledge the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ among us through all the sacrament that we have received and the presence of the Holy Spirit. As Lord said that if one or two of us meet together in his name, he will be among us. While we are praying, please, ask God in your heart through Jesus Christ and tell him what do you want from him. For our brothers, sisters, sons and daughters, grandfathers that he have called them. Ask God and trust him, he will answer you in this moment. And as we know, on the cross, one of the criminals asked him. He didn't ask about the children and the mother but he asked Lord Jesus Christ to grant him, to forgive him his sins. 
and welcome him to paradise. Jesus answer him, today you will be with me. Please ask Jesus for our brothers that who have left and sisters and also our children. If they were being called in different way on the cross or through the normal death. Lord Jesus Christ, we trust you to welcome and forgive all our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, that you have called them and accept all our prayers that we ask in you now. Welcome them into your kingdom. And also, Lord, let us prepare ourselves for your call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend William, for the prayers. I think it will be better to be uh, using one microphone at the center here instead of having lots of microphones on my hand. Uh, the commemoration of this sad event, the idea came about last year in April. But because of the COVID restrictions that hit, it, uh, that hit Melbourne, Uh, we were not able to celebrate and give thanks for the life and the mission of uh, late Archbishop Paulino Lukudu Loro. We know he is a prominent religious figure in Sudan and in South Sudan. I remember when we were still students in the 80s and in the 90s, he did some incredible jobs. But that wasn't mentioned during the biography that uh, Deacon Juma read this morning, uh, this uh, afternoon at the church. Uh, this is just a preamble to call upon the next speaker who had a personal encounter, a personal touch with the archbishop. And they became friends because the condition that they met was so tough and so challenging that they became friends for life. May I call upon uh, Reverend uh, Chaplain uh, Soma our chaplain Kabir uh, to come and say something. Thank you. I would like to ask you, if possible, to just stand with me and take a one-minute silence for the soul of Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro.
please be seated Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro deserved what we could do as much as we could. This is not just because he's, he was the Archbishop, but he had a lot that he has offered to the church in general if I mean the church in general, it's not only the Catholic church. He offered his ministry and his mission to the whole wider church in Sudan and in South Sudan and in other parts of the world. Standing here and just refreshing my memory about my encounter and my journey with Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro breaks me down. But thank God that he truly fought a good fight. He truly won the race. I don't know. Personally, I would not do what he did. When I was a young lay minister by then, and it was a difficult time in the church in South Sudan. By then, the government of Umar al-Basir, who, if we were by this time in what was called Sudan, I would not mention this name. Because if I mention something to do with Umar al-Basir, and then tomorrow I will be on the T-shirt. But of course, we are now in a different world. By then, church leaders were targeted. And for, this, for that reason, Archbishop Paulino Lokudu became a main target from most times by what was by then called the Sudan security. Not only the Sudan security, but there were other names of different securities that I don't even know. And these other securities were flown from Khartoum direct to South Sudan, to Juba, to persecute and to execute and even to disappear the life of many people. In which Paulino Lokuduloro, Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro, suffered the real suffer. As I said, he was not only the archbishop, but he was a survivor. He survived so many arrests. He survived tortures. He survived so many things that were to happen by then. It was my first time to see that an archbishop had to be given escorts. Some of you may know when I say escorts. He had guards that was with him in the car because any time he was going to be arrested, because any time his pigs, whether in the church or outside the church, he was going to be a victim. And for this particular reason, Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro had three or four guards in his car. And no one would enter his house, his residence, the residence of the Archbishop. He played a huge role he didn't fear Umar al-Bashir, as you have heard when Juma presented the eulogy. He was full of courage. He was ready to die 
for the sake of the people of Sudan and the people of South Sudan. He offered himself in the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. And because of that offer of himself, the person that I followed, who was persecuted the same way that I did, his name is Idris Nalos. Some of you may know, who are in Juba may know this person, or might have heard the name, but Polino Lokuduloro rescued Idris Nalos. And it is not only, not because Idris Nalos was a Catholic, but Idris Nalos was a Presbyterian minister. And after Idris Nalos was persecuted and almost killed, and then the whole narrative came back to follow myself. My presence here without Archbishop Polino Lokuduloro, maybe I would have not made it to be here. My wife Mary, who is sitting over there, who had a gun put on her head, was not going to be there. Not going to be here even today. But because Archbishop Polino Lokuduloro, who used to call me Bonjos, Sometimes he calls me a young man when we meet at the Sudan Council of Churches. Has always been close to everyone. When he heard that I was executed, he didn't hesitate, but he drove direct to the Sudan security office in Juba. Yeah, but he was the first with the guards to find out why and how. And that follow-up actually given me an opportunity that I became alive. Without that follow-up, I would have gone. Even if he himself suffered, in one occasion, he was arrested, and I was also arrested on the other side. And when he heard that I was arrested, he himself felt how he would he rescue me because it was easy for me to get lost than him to get lost because he was the archbishop. But I was just a lay person who was leading a church. But with his courageousness, with the, his passion for love, he was able to communicate and he was able to follow up and he and many other leaders there were able to, to fight a good fight so that people like me would be spared in life. I know Archbishop Polino Lokuduloro rescued so many people in whom maybe some are in Australia or maybe some are sitting here or some are in some other parts of the world. And I personally felt that one day I was going to go back to South Sudan and sit together with Archbishop Polino Lokuduloro in that house where I sat with him first, the house that no one could enter, only few people could enter. But he was open that I'm welcomed to visit him whenever I can. In 2008, when I returned back for the first time after my persecution in 2021, Polino, Archbishop Polino Lokuduloro was by then in Khartoum. And then when we finished and came back, I came and heard that he heard that I went to Juba but we didn't have any chance of meeting. But uh, 
one of our friends who, who is also a friend to Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro and a friend to me, uh, he is a, a pharmacist doctor who saw me out of St. Joseph um, Pharmacy and he said, are you alive? That was the first question he asked me. And I said, what do you think? And he said, his understanding was that I passed away, I was killed. And he couldn't believe his eyes. And that was because of Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro, whom we call as a father. He taught me to love enemies. He taught me to be courageous. He taught me to know that life does not finish with the torture. He taught me being locked in jail or being persecuted in various ways is either not the end of life. But he knows that life is beyond this human body. And that's why today I'm here and still keeping on going until the day God calls me. And for this reason, we deserve to thank Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro from the bottoms of our hearts for what he has done. He has nourished so many people with his word, whether in St. Teresa's Cathedral in Kator, whether in meetings, whether in various places that he, he went to, he visited, like what Lokwe have just mentioned here, he is the person of people. Some people would say the man of people. He doesn't care what it is, but he, he needs peace. He looks for peace for everyone so that at least people can survive. Umer al-Basir feared Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro, especially some people whom I remember, Nicola Adala, who was one of the priests, his arrests, even Bishop Herculano Lado with his arrest and persecutions. Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro was direct with Umer al-Basir, why and why? And Archbishop's close friend was also Bishop Michael Luger, who also passed away. They could do, pick up a journey and go direct to see Umar al Basir and question him about the persecutions and the unnecessary killings that happened. In Juba, what people used to call the White House, people used to hear something called White House in Juba and many other places where people were killed. Not to really take, take much of your time, but I stand here to thank God for Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro. Without him, I don't know, things would have not been the way they are back in South Sudan. Maybe peace would not even be there. But with, I thank him from the bottom of my heart. And also, I thank all the South Sudanese and the Sudanese, and particularly people who, whom Archbishop Paulino, Paulino Lokuduloro hailed from. He hailed from that small area, but he hailed for the whole South Sudan and the whole Sudan. Let's put our hands together for Archbishop Paulino Lokuduloro. Thank you, Reverend Chaplain, uh, for those uh, warm words. We're going to pause here for a break. 
Dinner is ready. Please help yourselves and we will resume after. Thank you. Akil Jahis, Nabak Dersadu Nefsa. Shukran. Malish, uh, Deacon Juma Gibarik Akil, Malish on the seat today. He's praying, he's blessing the food. Thank you. Place. No need to wait. Akel de Bariko Kalas. Kerena Mestena. I shan more can a guinea. Zaman de Bukundi than a barin. Lisa Fayet Ketir Gera Hassel. Mafigale Rojali Awal Nusana will. I get a sap. Muskeda or Makeda.
Malese jema le for those who are not familiar with the venue, uh, the toilets are just right out there when you are entering in, and there's another two position behind you, female and male, and uh, the exit, you can see the sign clear, green and white, in form of emergency one two three four is, is that the right now thank you and uh, those who are seated not I can see some of them still not eating time is going to be against us please let's just go and help ourselves thank you
I hope uh, you guys are enjoying your dinner. It's, the food was cooked lovely and it was awesome. I thank all the ladies who spent last night working hard, cooking these uh, various Sudanese and South Sudanese cuisine. You left your families, you left your kids, you left your work. That was the spirit. and. Uh, it was done for a good cause, the cause of our late Archbishop Paulino Lukuduloro. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, mothers. And thank you, aunties. That was a wonderful job. And uh, we started this function, and there was no lady who came up here and spoke. But now we are going to have a lady. Uh, Mama Dalgisa, you're welcome to say some few words on your connection or relationship encounter with uh, the late, our late Archbishop. Thank you. Oh, I'm very happy to stand before you here, really. Yeah, wonderful. Yes. We are here all in the love of God to honor our beloved bishop. Yes. Me, the Jesus, the bishop, I knew him earlier, before the 70s, I think, while he was a young priest. And I know him through my brother, who was a reverend, in those days, he was a student in the seminary, I think the speaker mentioned when they were seminary. You see, he, he talked about the bishop while he was a priest so much. He, when he come home for leave, he will speak about him, the, w the way he's teaching them and the way he's recognizing their responding to the acceptance of the spiritual life. Ah, so I say, oh, he must be a very strong man. He said he's from the barriers. Okay, I live in Equatoria sometimes back. I was studying in Equatoria and I know those tribes. So he's a barrier. Most barriers are Catholics. So I, I took it in my heart. 
of being an outstanding man, outstanding father, the way he behaves to his students in those days. Later on, when times goes on, he, be he became a bishop in the church. A lot of connections come in with the parish, parishes. I was in the parish of Khartoum. Uh, also, we were involved in, well, when he visited and he, when he, he goes, people listen to his presentations and all this. I pick, he said, my attention is to pick the goodness of his words. So I put in my heart that is really, is one of the outstanding religious leaders. This was in my mind in those days and up to this day. So, in fact, as we, st as we sit here now, we have a lot of leaders, but we identify our leaders through the way they are presenting to us and we will predict the love that is within them in their services. He's one of the people who loved his people and he wanted to upgrade the life of his people. And as the Reverend was speaking before me, he talked much about him and how really he was struggling to upgrade the Southern Sudanese spiritually and culturally in their ways of life in relation to their faith. He was working very hard. There are a lot of, of, of missionaries, there are a lot of fathers, there are a lot of reverends, but sometimes some shoot up as outstanding people, the way they preach, the way they connect with the civilian, the, uh, the, the, the lay people, the way they move out of the church circle to the outer civilization. Some, they, they are very strict to the church circle, but Lokudu was the man who goes out to the people and give them the best advices to be the best Christians. And this is what I pick from his culture of life and his outstanding behavior that move all Sudanese. Further on, I have a lot of children in Juba, so he turned out also again to be involved in advising the politicians to guide our country the way they should do best so that we come up as the people in recognition of the world. This was his struggle to bring us up. He's a man of the people. He's a father, he's a bishop. So let's put in our hearts, there are young children here who never know about him and who never saw him and he, who never heard his words when he's speaking. So put in heart that there are people really who work for the Southern Sudanese to come up, to be strong people, to be very spiritual, to live the righteous life because he is a righteous man. This was where he stick to upgrade our people. He worked, but sometimes our people, they don't understand who is working for them and who is very tired and who is sacrificing for them. And this is what we should put in hearts, that really let us recognize our leaders, how they are working. The one who may fail not to be open to us, we can struggle to face him and confront and be courageous as the courage that was said by the Reverend. This work that he, do, he has done, he could not do it if, he's, if, he's not, if, he, if he doesn't have the courage, because the courage is that what pick you up to confront somebody and talk to him, whether be it something that may come against you or maybe a violent response to you, the courage will force you to say something to somebody. And this is the life this man has in his culture. I don't want to talk much because when they were talking about the time. I may have added on some, but I'm very thankful for bringing me up here, uh, the graciousness of the bishop throughout his life is what we would put in our heart as his legacy and he's a man of ours. He's not a man of Juba alone, he's a man of all, as it was mentioned, he's a man of all. And I like being, putting people like that, that any outstanding person is a person of all, not a person of a particular tribe or a particular people. Thank you.
Thank you, Mama Dalgisa, for your warm words. We know, we know him. We know him very well. And we also respect him very well. And in good times, he is with us. In bad times, he is with us. He used to struggle two years back, but now he's got a little bit of a relief. His work seems to be easy, but it is hard. It is hard sometimes. You can call him anytime he can come to your place. He will comport you. He will stand with you. He's special. I do respect him. And I think all of us do respect him. Deacon George. Deacon George both. Or George Bush, they call him George Bush. Everybody, please give a round of applause to Bishop uh, Deacon George to come and say a word. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dictor. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself. I was given this chance to introduce uh, Brother Bill Furman. Bill, uh, Brother Bill is a Christian brother who worked in South Sudan for 10 years. He was working with Bishop. And his role was, uh, was a director for for the solidarity with South Sudan that was just organization that was established by, by Pope Benedict to help our bishops in their development and also to rebuild their parishes. So Brother Bill just sent me a message before that uh, so a visiting brother came from Vietnam and he took him for a journey to Geelong. So he said to pass uh, his apology. But also to give thanks to God. So to thanks the, the committee under the leadership of Dr. Uh, Lokwe. They have been working tirelessly for the last year up to this moment. Meetings, organizing, and then counseling again, reorganizing again until to this moment. So thank you very much, Dictor. On behalf of the church, I would like to say thank you to you and to your, your committee. For us as a community, it's good always to, to acknowledge the sacrifices of our leaders. We have done it before. So when the Bishop of Torrid led Jonathan died in 2013. We celebrated his life. Again, when the Bishop of Wau died, also we came, the family and the church, we stood together and we celebrated his life. And then years later, Bishop Benson of Malakal also died, we came and we celebrate his life. And here we are today uh, to give thanks to God for the life of our late Archbishop. He was a vocal, he was a voice for the voiceless. We know that they have never, you know, give up. Father Chaplain, so thank you for sharing your, your testimony with him. We know the journey has, you still, even persecution is still going on, never ended. So for us as a Catholics, 
it is an honor for us to celebrate the life of our Archbishop. He has done a lot for us. And we continue to pray for the young bishops who are now coming up. You remember I, I said only three of them now remained. Our Cardinal Gabriel Zeber, Bishop Paredi Taban, and Bishop Alcanaro, who just retired. So we need to pray for them. Without them, we will never be who we are today as a Catholics. And they are working for the entire Sudan, not, not just only for Catholic, as you heard from Father. So now we have the local church. They used to receive funds from abroad. Now it is the local church now. So it is our duty to stand together with our bishops to support them. You know now, Yan Zaman can't feel Guruj Barasalum in Min Vatican, Min Mahalada Kulu, Mafitani. Now the independent church, and they will depend on us. Zeel Hajala Munawa Lela the Haja Quais. So Anabugul Shukran, Ni Abat and Anal Kanisa, I would like to say thank you. Let us keep this spirit on. And Anabugul Kaman again, so thank you to our pastors from other denominations who are here with us. We are working closely because God has given us this trust to give you our pastoral cares. So on behalf of the church, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to Deacon Juma for working tirelessly with this, with this committee. So even having this hall, this is the first time for us to use this hall. And this is because it works here as well. So whatever place that we are in, we have to be a source of service to our community. So thank you very much. I would like to say thank you again to choir for presenting this beautiful mess. And let us continue to work together. Thank you again, Fabio, for now live stream is still going on. And le umahad bitana eli shagalin minumbara la hadi hasa. So thank you very much. It's good that yes, we are community, and this is the spirit of community. You know, coming together as a one body. May God continue to be with us as we celebrate His life, and let His spirit also remain with us. Let Him also continue to pray for us. He's already there now. But he still, he left us with this struggle that the country is still suffering. So we pray for our young bishops that they will be also the voice. They will follow their ways. Now, all these bishops are young. If you see from Wau, a young bishop in Wau, young, bis young bishop in Rombek, young bishop now in uh, Ye, archbishop, the new archbishop, very young, young bishop in, in Malakal, and we are now remaining with one diocese. We pray that also another young bishop will come for the diocese of Torit. So in this way, we will know that these are our sons. And this is the motto of St. Daniel Combone, that serve Africa by Africans. Now our bishops are local bishops. Our priests are now local priests. And we continue to pray for the church. They are still working hard so that peace will come. And we need to be part of that. So thank you very much. Let us continue this celebration. Dungara Bukunfi. Our celebration will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon George. Uh, we are not going to talk. There will be uh, less people coming up here to talk. It's only two or three more and then that's it. And I know there's these people who are coming here, they know that we've sat for a long time and you know, they are making it short, which is good. 
So may I call upon uh, Brother Andrew Ohide, the acting chairperson of South Sudanese Equatorian in Victoria. Andrew Ohide, please. And once uh, Mr. Andrew is finished, he will introduce uh, the SPLM representative in Victoria. He will call him Mr. William Deng will be coming then. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gordon Lokwe. Uh, just make it clear, I'm not acting chairman of Equatoria, but I'm representing Equatorian community. My name is Andrew Ohide, as uh, Lokwe have just mentioned. I just would like to well, thanks the organizing committee, uh, the Equatorian advisory body, the choirs, the priests, the pastors, and you, ladies and gentlemen. I know our community has a lot of history of leadership either in the church or in politics. But today, we are remembering a hard-working man who through his life and devotion to the church have gathered us here today. I have no idea and I don't know him personally, but from the eulogy and friends, I began to understand he is a man of integrity, a voice for those who are marginalized, and the voice for those who are voiceless. On behalf of Equatoria, I would like to say a few words about this God of man, or man of God. Archbishop Lokudu, or His Grace Archbishop Lokudu, to some he was considered as a hero. And to so many of you who are gathered here, he might be an icon or religious leader, a shepherd to the voiceless, marginalized people of South Sudan both during and after the independence of South Sudan. Upon his demise from this world of ours, many people in our country, refugee camps around the world, were shattered, not only because they have lost a church leader, but more importantly, is because they have lost someone who listened to their voices and cries. Someone who feels the pain, who wipes the tears, and who fight all the forces of death and humiliation to God's people upon his care. During the intense security in South Sudan, as one of our previous speaker have said he experienced so many imprisonments, torture, and threat, but he did not give up. He speak up to the truth. He walked all the streets of Juba. He visited all camps and displaced area. Just to condolence people, to be with the poor, to strengthen those who are weak, and to give the hope to those who are lack. During the conflict in South Sudan, 
Archbishop Lokudu was described by many as unshakable pillar of the church and the society of South Sudanese. A tough man, fearless of gun or bullet. A man of integrity who can speak so many languages. He can speak the language of violence peacefully. He can speak a language of the church, which is preaching the good news to the people. He can preach togetherness and he can bring people not only by his voice, by his presence. After the storm of life, the life he lived in the hearts of politics, or political environment, or political controversy, and the rise of tribalism and religious division in South Sudan, he says no to any of this. And he says these words, the fight cannot be silent by fight, but look up into the man above all of us. The grace and the power of the Holy Spirit can bring a peaceful life to those who are seeking peace under his care. The fight, the silent, he fought the fight that cannot be described. His message was not only a religious message that has been vibrating across the borders of our state and our country. His death reminds us that the hope is still ahead of us. The liberation of South Sudan was not only political or military but was also a power of God who provide the leaders with the spirit of commitment to a vision of a new Sudan and the keys of reconciliation to one another. Lokudu remind the leaders of South Sudan to always look up to God as a true source of liberation and sustainable peace through the power of forgiveness. Today, however, you may have known his, him as a bishop or religious leader. But more importantly today, we gathered here today to accompany him in prayers as far as we ourselves can go to the very age of next life following his departure, praising him with all our hearts into eternal, merciful, all accompanying, and the love and love of God Himself. Bishop Lokudu has left many memories to all of the people of South Sudan, specifically the Catholic community. Here in Melbourne, Australia today, Many have, mem many have a memories of his geniusness, care, compassion that they have encountered in, his, in this man of God who has dedicated his life to serve the people of God in South Sudan and all around the world. For sure he is and was and will always be remembered not only a bishop, but as an uncle to many, a grandfather, a friend, or maybe he gave a confirmation of baptism to some of us here, or some of your children. He blessed so many marriages, blessed so many buildings, and blessed so many churches. 
and reconcile so many communities. And today, his life mark a moment of reconciliation to ourselves. As I can recall, Equatoria is not as five or six years ago. This is due to division that we have among ourselves. I wish and hope but the life and the history that we had today about this gentleman and this man up here, we can rewind and reverse our decisions and come back as Equatorian and unite and remember a hard work that some of our leaders have over to us. This community was not built by one person. It was the spirit of women you, who are here, who stood up and say, enough is enough. A community is not built for men. We need to stand up and say, Equatoria need to come back alive. And no one can do that. No one can do that except you come back again and say, a woman, oh yeah. We cannot help to stop any division among us. But with the spirit of reconciliation and forgiveness and hard work and acceptance that Lokwe is my brother, Acholi is my brother, my sister, the two chaplains are my chaplain, priests or pastors, Ogida is my brother, in that spirit, the will of God will fall upon our hearts, and our community will come back to life. As a community today, I would like to say thanks to all of you, the community leaders, religious, and all of the individuals, especially our women, for coming today and praise and celebrate the life of this man who has given us all what he has in his power. He has used the power of the church wisely. He has never abused it. He stood up for all of us and for the people of South Sudan. He was born in Luri, Kwereji, raised up as a barrier. But today our celebration shows that this man was not a barrier only. He belongs to the church of God. And for this end, may God bless his soul. May God bless his family. The people of South Sudan. The Equatorian community here in Melbourne. And all the churches that we have with us here. And may God bless South Sudan. And may God bless Australia. My speech ends here. But I'll introduce one of our guest speakers. Who is my friend? I think it's pretty much he will speak on a level of politics. Because this man here, up there, when we had few people who have encountered him, you can identify and see that he was not just a religious leader, leader only. He was a man of all communities. He sacrificed his life for all South Sudanese without distinction of who is a Dinka, Latuka, for Julu, and all our tribes. He was for South Sudanese. And for this, I will introduce our next guest speaker, who is my friend and a representative of the SPLM in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand to our friend, David Tenge Port.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the Almighty God for giving us this opportunity to gather today uh, in this place. And uh, I will uh, acknowledge a uh, few, uh, I will observe protocol. Uh, family of late uh, Archbishop Baba Folina Lukudulora, leader of uh, Great Equatoria community, very wonderful community, all sub-community leaders present here, a spiritual leaders present today, uh, Deacon George and all chaplain and uh, and pastors from different denominations who are present today in this uh, hall. Uh, organizing committee, I want to acknowledge the organizing committee uh, under leadership of uh, Dr. Lokwe and all the members uh, in that committee. First of all, um, allow me to pay my heartfelt condolences to the family and the entire South Sudanese community for a sudden, even though we are uh, commemorating, we are celebrating the uh, one year on anniversary of our father, I would like to, um, uh, on behalf of the SPLM chapter in Australia here, and myself and my family, where I come from, uh, I would like to uh, pay my heartfelt condolences to the family and to the, the entire community of South Sudanese and our whole uh, uh, Equatorial community. In an event like this, we do not need to talk politics, but we need to reflect on the life of a great man, Archbishop uh, Paulina Lokudu, Laura. This gentleman here, uh, as he was mentioned by my friend, uh, Andrew Heide, of this father here, he was a great man. He was a father, not only for his immediate family, but father for many, many sons and daughters of the Republic of South Sudan. And not only South Sudan, Sudan and even the world. So I had opportunity to uh, look into his profile. Uh, before I come, I was just driving and looking into his profile. And I found that uh, he has actually in, in best and infected a lot of lives uh, in terms of uh, whether it being a Christianity or politics or anything in a society. When it comes to losing someone, of course, yes, we are celebrating his life, we are commemorating, we are reflecting on his, uh, the thing that he have done for us, uh, whether directly or indirectly. But if we talk about losing loved one, the pain of losing loved one is, is not an easy thing. It is not something that you can be able to endure. Losing a father, losing a wife, losing a child, it is unbearable pain that remain for decades. I believe the immediate family who are here will agree with what I'm saying. And I have an experience for that. Last year, April uh, 2021, I lost my wife. left behind four beautiful kids. Uh, many community members who know me, uh, maybe they are aware of this. And I'm still asking a lot of questions. And I believe the family 
whether being here, US, and, and back in South Sudan, is have a lot of questions. A question that it is very difficult for you to find answers for. But Archbishop Lokudu Lora was a very influential figure in our society, not only in the Kotaria community, in our society. When I talk about society, I'm talking about South Sudan and even Sudan. He has immensely contributed to the realization of what we call now South Sudan. And, and I have to be very specific for every man here who is a South Sudanese a gentleman, whether you are a spiritual father, I mean, whether you are a politician or non-politician, you need to respect our spiritual fathers because they don't just preach the word. They fight. And they always, you know, fight for the rights of uh, and uh, uh, right of voiceless uh, individuals. Our father contribution was during a struggle and even after a struggle or during the implementation of CPA, which resulted into the birth of our country, being due, you know, um, through the prayers, the word of encouragement, um, mobilizing funds for the movement uh, through missionaries and also, you know, uh, churches who are operating back in South Sudan and above all was a Catholic Church. So, in another word, if we talk about a spiritual part, we will not uh, use the word hero. But if we talk about, you know, uh, physical side of us, we will say, Archbishop uh, Lukudu is one of the martyrs, those who fought directly and indirectly for us to have a country called South Sudan today. Uh, I remember there's something that maybe some of you may have uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the uh, previous speakers may, may have mentioned that. And this is something very important. I'm, I'm as fellow members, but I need, I, I must mention this. During the uh, NLC conference before 2013, NLC is uh, National Liberation Council of SPLM. When that conference was was held in Juba, in Nyakuran Cultural Center. In an opening remarks, or opening word of prayer, Archbishop Lokudu advised the leadership of SPLM not to continue in, proceeding, uh, in, in a proceeding, or to continue the conference. Why? Because he have seen a revelation he didn't mention the revelation, but he said, I would suggest and advise the leadership to put on hold the conference and sit and reconcile. Because uh, he was having that revelation that there was no uh, peace uh, in our, in our uh, uh, party, the leadership of the SPLM. The, adv the advice to postpone the conference was ignored by the leadership. And then on the 15th of December 2013, the war erupted in Juba. So imagine if his advice was welcome or were embraced, we could have not had what we are witnessing today. There is a Greek a uh, Greek, uh, Greek proverb which says, a society grows great when whole men planted trees who said they will never sit it. They will never sit on. They plant trees, but they will not enjoy the shade of those trees. And this hard, uh, great man, Archbishop 
planted a lot of trees for South Sudanese. I want to conclude by touching something very important about his life. That's something very fascinated and it actually touched my life. That Lukudu was a very young man when he joined a Christian mission. You can see his life having almost or maybe 80 years when he passed in April uh, uh, 5th, 2001. He made his first vows to be a member of the Sons of Sacred Heart of Jesus. And that was when he was 27 years. And he continued sacrificing. He sacrificed himself for the service of not only his family, or the, his community, but the entire South Sudanese community. The Majesty Queen once observed, and I quote, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether be short, be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family, in which we all belong. That's what this gentleman did. In conclusion, if we as the party or the, the country have people in mind that we believe they are actually our liberators, whom we believe they struggle very hard for us to have a country called Republic of South Sudan today, and you omit or minus Archbishop or any spiritual father, whether being past or present, you are writing a wrong history as a source for this. There's no country we are seeing now today without this great man. May his soul continue to raise in peace. May God continue to give us heart to remember him and those who have fallen, being spiritual fathers, being church leaders, or our politicians, or our martyrs who died for the cause for us to realize or to witness what we are seeing today. Now, what I want to conclude is that, look, um, an event like this will always remind us about things we don't know about us as South Sudanese. And I believe this is the beginning of a unity. Let's continue to pray for ourselves and for our community and for our country. And I believe one day we will cross over. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Brother David Tang, for your speech. I can speak Arabic, Muslim. Yes, I know we've got guests around here who don't, uh, who don't speak Arabic, but I believe I can see you guys at the back there. Now, we have sat down for a while so there is a worship team that came all the way from Western suburb. They call themselves Barry Fellowship Choir. It's a tribute to our late Archbishop, His Grace, Paulina Lukudu. He's a Barry too. We are tribes. All of us are tribes, and we are proud of that. What we are not proud of is tribalism. This is not politics, but this is the reality. So this choir 
they will stage they will come up stage and then they will sing hymns you may not understand them but i pray that the spirit the holy spirit helps you shake your body or move your body according to the tunes and people are encouraged to you know i see most of our sisters and women all the time they they're here dancing and praising god but we men sometimes we just sit back and relax and see we don't know what's going on for not talking too much bari fellowship choir the stage is yours thank you Ita kun wen nas sabari Hajal kanwa molo marhum amolo bishop kan kwes lana ligon nakil sat talaba fi masir ligo hukumat sudan wogi fu gurus sanna uo rale kana ista alam kula sambi sadu talaba kan fi masir mo gurus asan kida ma fi zol kan makala so talim to yani wagder wari la nas al bara de kulu kana es al bara saadu nas nafs al gurus al kan hukuma goji lan na de ya wadi lan na kaman asan kira ay zul agara fi masir baad sanat tisain la gidam ark bishop polin lo kudukan endu it fi inu gurus al kan gija kulu shahar de jamin kinisa min caritas wo kan endu it fogo de hajan nas ma bin situ Haleluya Ana bi kelima arabi tenna tajuba de Ana birija be sid ma ingilizi ya shanke de ial tenna sukarde kelasoma Anna maindi guna tani jedid Ana mutaakid disco tenna fi yesu de kulu matere ni mataro tanta bare de gariban yalla terji muru sanat tenin Terani ma linna indu bugul ngunde den konesi kwe le peng de den gwilinge lio konana kita ko tot iri logo ya telet lumondunan ba arabi bugul rabana arf amail bitai warf haya bitai ana geni ke kanana gamul haja al kwez be hagiga ana indu shunu ba arabi tedna tajuba bugul shunu yani Tegi abita queen de binadi shunu ba arabi tajuba taj galifigi stena na le raba na inak ache beso paulino lukudulara je magibeli takonasma ana magura wonu suketir wa maluketir harb tajunub de kulu insan haribu beteriga barao barao asan junub weledu jedit Lakini asade ajuita wana kuturuku bafuata kedena haribo asan junub weledu jadid ni miretnin ana bizakir wahid kilima bito gali fearing evil is the beginning of wisdom anna junubin say are we fearing evil no i'm not going to say politics but we don't fear evil kanna magi fear Evil yao netija bito kulu zola ino kanita maksud asanita junubi maybe you are the lucky one but i know all of us we have tears deep inside our heart and these tears in the naiman 
indana iman yom dak harf ta junub al awal badao manase abu hatten al awal mon bada belisa bu santur i believe the best south sudan is coming by god's grace nasko bar kan futu zede they leave us something and that something ya lela na gada zede we have to pick something and take home for you, the young people who are born here, you have listened to brief history. He's a hero, not only for the church in South Sudan and Sudan, but for the whole world. Now you are here as a young person. What is your mission for South Sudanese community and your family and your life journey, being a girl or a boy? Are you going to get the crown that we are going to sing? I'm quite confident Atibeso Paulino Lukuduloro have that crown. He wore it and he have it. He fight the race and he finish it with dignity. And I'm quite confident he's in God's mercy keeping and listening to us. Shukuran takun sedit. Keden narwata kong gidam. Rabba nabiteri jimle bagenas. Logoya telet lumundunan. Bada lena ngunde den kone sikwe, lepeng de den toronjin kwe. Ngunde den kone sikwe, lepeng de den kwe. Ngunde den kone sikwe. Le peng de den guiling elio Kona ni ubo koto diri Lago ya tele lumonduna Ngun de den kone sikwe Le peng de den guiling elio lo Kona ni ubo koto diri Lago ya tele lumonduna
Shukran Sedid le takon. Shukran le rabana. Hallelujah. Yesu mere. Hasa kalas nas take te bikun mafi fi combined choir I'm inviting combined choir to come on the stage and give us those special songs you know what you're going to do I don't have to tell you anything So we are going to join in the choir is going to take the stage and after the choir we are going to have traditional dances but before the traditional dance, we'll have a family word prior the dance. A family word, by family I mean a Bari family word before the Bari traditional dance will uh, come later. And all of us are Bari tonight. Thank you. Okay, not only uh, a combined choir, uh, there's the members of other choirs. Also, you are welcome to join the group. And not only the members of the choir, anyone that you think tonight you can sing, you're welcome. And our song is easy and well-known song. Jenata Dawoodi was Solomona. I know most of you know the song very well. And don't worry, we've got words here for you. The Sudanese Catholic Choir, the Shukuru Yesu Choir, the Barry Fellowship Choir. Shukuru Yesu Choir, I can see the members there. You are all welcome to the stage. And any choir who has been choir singing Shukuru Yesu, whether in Khartoum, whether in Juba, whether in Malakal, Wherever you are, you are most welcome to join. this song I just got something special to present to you guys um, as we have heard the journey of uh, our leader Archbishop Olino Lukuduloro I was one of the youth that has that chance to be very very close to him my journey of faith was his in hands. So he played a big role in structuring who I am today in faith. So I'm honored. As most of my journey as a choir member, as a conductor, conductress of the choir has been during his time. So I'm honored today to announce to you that I have chosen his memory to be my last day of conducting. I am I am retiring, but I can come from home and still do the job, isn't oh, it? Yay. So this is the good news. It's still, I'm still serving, but officially I'm retiring. No. Praise be to God. Okay. Beautiful choir. Let's start our song. This song is about building the church. Ditch church in front of you. He's built, he's one of the people who built this church. So we need to take this legacy ahead. 
Let's be one as one body of Christ, as one strong church. Hallelujah. Let's sing our song and enjoy the words.
Amen. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for that outstanding performance from the choirs. Can we take our seats, please? Now, uh, may I invite Mr. Rajab Suleiman to come and give us a word of the family of the late Archbishop Paulino Lukuduloro. Once he finishes his speech, then our very brothers and sisters will be rocking the floor. Thank you, Mr. Rajab. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Dr. Lokwe, for the opportunity that you have given me to give a word on behalf of the Bari community. Bari community is the small community that Archbishop Paulino Kudu came from. On behalf of Bari community, I would like to say thank you to everyone who made this day a successful day. Everyone that has come and celebrated the life of our His Grace, Paulino Lukuduloro. We give thanks to all the mothers who have been working since last night to make this day a successful day. Also, I would like to give thanks to the organizing committee who organized the occasion and also the choirs who made the, uh, the, the day is a successful day. On behalf of Bari community as well, I want to thank all the, the church leaders, our priests, and our deacons led by the, the Sudanese chaplaincy led by Deacon George. Yes, Archbishop Paulino Lukudu was born from a mother and father, Barry, from the small community. But as we know, when the son in the mother womb is the son of the father and, and the mother. When he is born, he will become a son of the society until he becomes worldwide. Lukudu was born from a Bari family, but now he is celebrated worldwide for the work that he has done to the humanity. 
we as a body, we are very proud of that because our son has completed his duty to the mankind, regardless of race. He was there for everybody. And now we are celebrating his life. And we have to learn from his duties that he has done on earth here. And the legacy that he's going to leave on us. As many people have said, that he has a courage to say what other people cannot say. Even in the turmoil uh, times, he was there. People that live with him experience that. And what has been said here as a family, our uncle, he has made us proud through his work to the mankind. I don't have much to say, but only that I want to say thank you to everyone who is still with us here and supporting us and supporting the message of the church to go across. And also we thank sincerely Sudanese Catholic chaplaincy for their organizations or support on this occasions. Also, we cannot forget our media, media men there, two of them that making the streamline also give you a thank for making things to be watched all worldwide. And also, James Ika there also will not forget to give you a thank because you are always with us and making our voices to be clear to everybody to be to know thank you for all that thank you my my brothers and sisters for all this your support morally materially and god bless you and all of us will enjoy one day in celebration that all of us will be happy now we, we're making the memorial of our great men that who work even the enemies seeing him also they stand up and salute him because he's the man that telling the truth and when you're telling the truth even your enemy always they will be on your side when times come thank you for listening thank you brother rajab for the welcoming words and the appreciation from all all members of your family. Before I hand it over the floor to the body, we thank each and every person who have contributed financially to making this function a reality. We thank uh, South Sudanese, uh, the Sudanese chaplaincy. We thank uh, Mama uh, Delgesa. We thank the uh, sister Esther Keji for the chairs dressing and uh, sister Salwa also for helping out this is for free we, we they didn't charge any money for that which is a good spirit and uh, all the financial support that came from our community members are well taken in and uh, I have a chance for telling you if you have an, uh, an information that you want to pass to the community you're much welcome to do that the one that I have here is on the 1st of October it is a Saturday there will be prayers for the soul of the late mother of our sister Rose Wilson at 4 p.m. at St. Mary Primary School Hall in Dandenong here that is the only uh, information that I have. But if you have any announcement, don't hesitate to come to me and I will, I will uh, make sure that it goes through to the community. And Madam uh, Katrina also will later on try to pay tribute to uh, our late 
uh, brother and father, Archbishop Ponino Lukuduloro. She's preparing herself and then she will just do that later. Thank you. Now, the whole thing is starting now. I think you're welcome to join anyway. It's not just for Barry alone, okay? Okay. <laughs> Sumail tandu mana po kayang ni kulore re kaduki kulore lo kango tajura ngorale kalore mo ara mo ko ini akolo ya bu de pa kolo korolo ngutu ya pa sumail tandu mana po kayang ni kulore re kaduki kulore lo kango tajura ngorale kalore mo ara mo ko ini akolo ya bu de pa kolo korolo ngutu Najeti bare re gotala dura ta gojeta bura ko minyo itu mete apere na re moro yi ko kilo najeti bare re gotala dura ta gojeta bura ko minyo itu mete apere na re moro yi ko kilo be aba sumae tando mana po kayang ni kulore re kaduki kulore lo kango ta jure moro le kalore mo ara mo ko ni akolo ya bu de pa kolo koro Ya ba sumail tando mana po kayang ni kulore kaduki kulore lo kango tajura ngole kalore mo ane mo ko ni ya kulo 
Di pialo kine sumile Koi kede adupa kodo Ikede memur berin Moju ya pala mora Di pialo kine sumile Koi kede adupa kodo Ikede memur berin Tine na binia Kede odine wa Bibi nangi loko no muka Ada kok binang Di nena binia kada di nawa abibi nang loko no muke ada nang ker muke ai pia lo kene sumile koi kada adu ba kada di kada ba ba pari moju ya pala mure pia lo kene sumile koi kada adu ba kada i kada ma ma pari Nena binia kada odina wa bibi nangila kono muke ada kok binang katu. Nena binia kada odina wa bibi nangila kono muke ada kok binang. Di piala kine sumile koi kada adu pakodo i kada mamat pari. Sara kau ya pala mure. Piala kine sumile koi kada adu pakodo i kada mamat pari. Sara kau ya pala mure. I nena binia kada di nawa bibi nangila kono muke. Di nena binia kada di nawa bibi nangila kono muke. Ada kabin ang kature, piano kine sumile, koi kada adu ba kado, i kada mamur bari, sala koi abal mure. Piano kine sumile, koi kada adu ba kado, i kada mamur bari, sala koi abal mure. Moko si kwe, moko si kwe. Ya 
Maman yena mokonyo bi anam papa ken ko bare jurli kan luye nga koi kede kata goro ta ko baba koi kede kata goro yero ti boya asur bi anam koi amor bari ka gele koi kede kata goro ta ko ba koi kede kata goro yero ti boya papa <laughs> Biana kon koya mok borik agele koi kade kata gogoro ya koi kade kata gogoro yero ti boya biana kon koya mok borik agele rima kwe kunu mine metoi ling jo jo mamangi na mogonyo biana papa ken obari rima kwe to wili lukwe yo yongo mamangi na mogonyo biana papa ken kobare Koi kade kata kugoro Koi kade kata kugoro yaron ti bawa asul biana kon koi amok ori agele koi kade kata kugoro Koi kade kata kugoro yaron ti bawa asul biana kon koi amok ori agele Le jim nankadet Le jim Ade kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na yeka kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na yeka kala tengoro sarapino lo jada kena langoro konde kana di ye ye kala tengoro sarapino lo jada kena langoro konde kana di ye ye kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na yeka kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo Kala tinguro sarapino lo jada kena langoro konde kana di ye ye kala tinguro sarapino lo jada kena langoro konde kana di ye kona bibi jaga jina jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye kona bibi jaga jina jada e ngote nyo peda akala tinguro sarapino lo jada kena langoro konde kana di ye ye kala tinguro sarapino lo jada. Kena langora konde kana de ye ye kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye ka kona bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye ka kala te ngoro sarapina lo jada kena langora konde kana de ye ye ngoro sarapina kena langora konde kana de ye Konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na ye ka konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na ye kala te ngoro sarabina lo jota kena la ngoro konde kana di ye ye kala te ngoro sarabina kena la ngoro konde kana di konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo petak na ye ka konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote Ya kala tinguro sarabina no jada kena langoro konde kana de ye ye kala tinguro sarabina jada kena langoro konde kana de ye ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye ka kala tinguro sarabina kena langoro konde kana de ye ye kala tinguro sarabina no Kena langora konde kana de ye ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo ben konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo ben kena ka kala te ngoro sarabina lo ja kena langora konde kana de ye ye kala te ngoro sarabina lo ja kena langora konde kana de ye ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo ben kena e Konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ka kala te ngoro sarabina lo jada e na la ngoro konde kana kala te ngoro sarabina lo jada e na la ngoro konde kana de ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena ye konal bibi ja keji na jada e ngote nyo peda kena
Kalate ngoro sarabi na loja ta kenala ngoro konde kana de kalate ngoro sarabi na loja ta kenala ngoro boko sikwe boko sikwe lojo nenan boko sikwe Thank you. Thank you to uh, Barry family. It was a lovely uh, dance. Some of the songs that we heard in the 80s and 90s in Juba, we rehear them tonight, which was good. Now we have a tribute from one of our sisters. She's uh, commonly known as Mama Dudu. Mama Dudu is going to present us a monologue. Mama Dudu is going to present us a monologue of Lokoya. So she's going to sing and she's going to shake her body as well. Come on, Mama Dudu. We are waiting. And before she comes in, we also acknowledge those who came from interstate to attend this function. Thank you very much for coming down to Melbourne. And then I end again. Why, why, mama? Why, why, baba? Ezukana to borogala. Oh, diga. 
Kamera, 